Hey everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to show you guys some cool ways to use the distort wave filter, and particularly some ways to kind of glitch up and destroy parts of your photo with the wave filter. So here's the photo I have open, and you can find the wave filter under filter, distort, wave, but before I apply it on the whole photo, a cool way that I want to show you how to use it in this tutorial is grab your rectangular marquee tool first and then just select out a portion of your photo that you want to apply the filter onto. So if I know I'm going to be kind of destroying part of the photo and glitching it up, if I just grab this part right here, um, actually I'll right click and deselect, let's grab a little bit more. So right before it gets to the bar of soap and the fingers. Now the effect is only going to affect this little boxed area. So if I now go to filter, distort, wave, it'll open up our wave generator menu. And this is a really fun menu to use in Photoshop because it's its own kind of little generator with a bunch of sliders and levers for you to play around with. So there's three types of waves that you can apply to your photo. And that's sine, triangle, and square. And you can see a preview of what these kind of look like. And they're all based on mathematics and stuff like that, boring stuff. But sine is typically your smooth and bendy wave. And then if you want to get into more choppy and triangular stuff, you could try triangle and square. Really, there's no right or wrong choice. You get creative. Now, number of generators is how many waves there are, so to speak. So the more generators there are, the more amplified the effect is going to get. So that's you could play around with that. I'll leave it at one. And the wavelength is a range. So you could give it a minimum and a maximum. So right now, it has the full range of wavelength. However, if I turn down the maximum wavelength, you could see each wavelength gets smaller and smaller, and it starts to get real choppy. And that's what we might do for this effect. Amplitude as well is kind of like the strength. So if the minimum is 1 to 999, and I forgot to tell you guys all about this randomize button. You press this randomize button, you might get something totally different each time because you're using such a large range. And that's a big part of the fun of it, is randomizing it and seeing if you can get something cool. However, you can get pretty precise with it by adjusting these ranges. So the lower I do the amplitude, then the more likely it is to not really twist and bend the photo that much because there's only a possible range of 1 to 100. Same thing with the wavelength. The lower I do the wavelength, then you're not going to get those big waves anymore. You're just going to get those little honeycombs and ripples. Now the scale is where you can get the most control on the effect after the fact, so to speak. So say I have this wavy effect with a bunch of generators, and I only want it to influence the photo horizontally or vertically. So if I turn down the horizontal slider to 0%, now you can see I'm only adjusting it on a vertical level. And if I turn down the vertical level to zero or one percent really, you can't do zero, then you can see I'm only adjusting it on a horizontal level. So with all that in mind, consider how you want to chop up and slice up the portions of your photo if you're going for that glitch art style. And I'll show you one cool trick right now that I played around with to get really thin slices. So you want to turn the amplitude maximum pretty up and then you want to turn the wavelength maximum down so it's going to have a powerful wave effect but it's going to repeat itself at a very short wavelength. So the part that you can really play with the separation is in the scale. So now that I have all the wavelengths and generators set up, if I take my vertical scale, take it all the way down to one and then grab my horizontal scale and then slowly move it over to the right, you can see what that does. It totally stretches things out horizontally. And if I take a look at my original photo with that clean background and the forearm sticking out, I can make it look pretty split up. And let's press OK. Here's another example of a bit more gentle of a wave usage where I grab the rectangular marquee like this, and then I applied a wave filter, but with a lot more softer of a wave rather than real put together. So that's just a little bit of a quick experimentation and demonstration of one use for the wave distort filter. 
Hopefully, if you guys didn't know about this filter before, you found some cool things and got some ideas for how to use it on a project of your own. If you guys did like this video, definitely leave a like below and check out the Photoshop tutorials playlist on my channel for more Photoshop. And definitely subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for all types of new videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.